I just wanted to do that. <laughs> Amen. Are you, are you in Psalm? Are you in Psalm 96? Come on. 96 verse 8. You can bring the lights up. Amen. Praise Jesus forever. Give to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Amen. Now, we're not just talking about money right there. This is about a praise. Come on, you come to God. You don't give God leftovers. Come on, we got to give them our all. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus forever. I mean, I mean we, we've already been going an hour and 15 minutes, and, and we're just getting started. I don't understand these churches that go one hour and 15 minutes. Next. Next. Now, their argument would be, are you ready for this? I'm just going to hit on it because I feel the Lord right here. Their argument would be, we have to sustain the crowds. The problem is, if you'd make your service flow with the Holy Ghost, your crowd would thin out. Because not everybody wants the Lord. They want to satisfy their sin-infested conscience. Are you hearing me? So I have no problem with three services a day, but I'm not going to melt, make my service conform to man. We're going to make our services conform to God. And if we can't fit him in, that ain't my problem. That's his problem. He'll open up a door. Amen. People ought to get to church earlier. See, some of y'all coming at 10, 10, 10, 35, you won't get in because there's coming a time. And I believe really soon they're going to be lining up overnight just to get into the house of the Lord. And you're going to say, well, I've been paying my tithes there for 20 years. Well, that tootie-doo-doo. You're going to better get there on time because if you ain't on time, you ain't going to get a seat. Glory be to Jesus. I'm walking in here today, and as I do every day, as we begin to call it out, I pray over that house on my right, and I pray over that property over there on my left, and I claim it for the Lord. I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The school's going to burst out at the seam. Our Bible college is going to burst out at the seem because we're going to have to raise up some young people you hear me i don't want some old people i need some young now god bless all you old folk we all old folks together but as we're getting older we're going to all get old and die off and if we don't replenish ourselves we're going to have a church like all the other churches dying out and saying we can't have church because of covid because if we get it all we're going all going to die out give me somebody come on years ago I, I said there's entirely too many old people on the platform so i went up and i just said you know what we're we're promoting you off the platform to this and people get get mad and got upset with me and left the church over it because they didn't want to listen to the man of God they didn't want to listen to what God was saying God was saying get off the pla- get all them old people off the platform because we're trying to minute as I'm getting older more younger people gonna be out there we just I talked to them I said get all these old people love all you old love all you old people I love you but I said, we got to have young people out there to greeting. They said, so you get mad. Don't get mad at them. Get, you get mad at me and then get mad at God and just go ahead and leave the church. Because we don't need your fuddy duh little old little self. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you about loud. Let's go be loud in here. And as you get older, it's going to get louder. Because see, it's not louder here. It's these things pick up more. So what do you do? You stick them with something. You stick in some toilet paper. But the moment you start getting critical over how loud the music is, that's when you spiritually die to this house. That's that's when you need to go someplace else. You go to the first church of Frigidaire. You know where nobody's getting saved and nobody's getting healed and nobody's getting delivered. I'm not here to play to the crowd. I'm not here. We're here to entertain a king. And I'm telling you, that king was really impressed with worship in this house because I could feel the smile of God smiling down on this house as we were worshiping the Lord. Come on, somebody, say amen. amen. Woo! My Jesus. <sighs> Delivering power of God. You flow with the Holy Ghost. You flow with the Lord. What does God want to do? It's not three points in a poem. It's what, what does God want to do? If well, God told me to stand in front of you for 10 minutes and talk in the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't talk question. Well, you know, I'd rather speak five intelligent words and 10,000 words in a tongue. Well, granted, 
But that's not law. That's not, that's not that I can't stand in front of you. Well, you know, that's not, no, it's not. I, I'm going to do what the Holy Ghost says. Now, if, it, if, if, if what, what I think God's saying contradicts his word, well, he'll never do that, right? I said, right? And so if the Lord told me to run around this church yelling at the top of my lungs, right now, just run, 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 run. And I did it 10 times. I'm going to run and I'm going to scream. You, you, you're going to see crazy things. God tells you to do some crazy things. Now, you say, well, I, all of a sudden I start running around the church and, and I come up to you and I say, sit down. You say, well, God told me. God didn't tell you because I just told you to sit down. See, you don't like that because, see, you, you, you see, many people don't like that. I had one woman doing that. We were in prayer meeting, and she, she goes to running and shouting. I've shared this a thousand times. This is back in the day. She's running around. Ah, ah, and, I t- and she was out of order. You could tell it was all flesh. And so I said, sit down. I, or No, I didn't because I didn't want to embarrass her. So what I said is I said, everybody stop. We're all going to pray in agreement together. Everybody stop. Right now, don't be praying for nobody else. She went up and grabbed somebody by the hand and started running around the church. Ah, I said, everybody stop. And she didn't listen. So I remember like yesterday, I came down off the platform and she made her rounds, grabbing this other person. See, everybody, all these devils, they want some agreement, you know. And so she got herself. And this, this, the one was just, you know, rather than pull her, she didn't have any, she was too timid. When somebody wants to drag you in the wrong direction, you go, quit it. I am following you. I'm following the Lord. So she turned around the corner. She comes up here. "Ah!" And she stops because she sees me. And I looked at her and I went, stop it. And I turned back up and I went up. And what'd she do? She stopped it after service. Pastor Chuck, I don't understand. I was being led by the Lord. I said, the Lord will never tell you to do something that's contrary to what I just said. Because you see, without, whether you want to understand that or not, I happen to be the shepherd of the house. I, I don't like pulling rank, and I should never have to. But the moment I say it's time to get together, we're, we're, we're in the right flow. Because let me tell you what, when the Holy Ghost begins falling and there's in a greater measure, and I'm talking about where we got three, 400 people coming to the church above and beyond, and they're trying to get in, you're going to have granola Christians show up. Those are the fruits and the flakes and they start showing up and many of them are trying to oh they're 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 trying to get attention one time we had an individual over here jump up and start yelling and screaming in tongues and 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 just after actually he was running his mouth on 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 dominic or something he in the thing he was running his mouth over there and then he then right right one morning he's running his mouth against leadership again to me against me and then he runs up and he stands up and he's like he wants to give a word from the lord i knew it was a word from i didn't want to embarrass the guy draw attention to it so i just told the music to, he started praying in tongues and i told the music to play louder and he just shut up because that's exactly what he's supposed to do and he got all offended and we just told him don't come back why? You, you got to understand there's got to be flow because you're going to have people when revival really starts moving, there's going to be manifestations of the spirit that sometimes those manifestations are of, of, of crazy stuff. Now, no barking. Roof, roof. There's people that they, 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 they get the barking ministry. There's no barking. There's nothing, no Holy Ghost barking. Come on, somebody. Well, no, I felt led of the Lord to bark. I don't know. You go down to U of L, you hang out with all them with them litter boxes, but you ain't coming here. Amen. Amen. But there's times, there's flows that are that that, you, that has to be has to be uh, governed and protected. The the anointing on the platform has to be governed. It has to be protected. We have a responsibility before God to make sure that people that come behind the pulpit are living righteously. That's why people say, Pastor, you got to have this person come to the church. I barely, rarely, if I never met them, I ain't having them. I don't care who they are. Very rarely do I ever have people that I've never met on the platform. I don't care how big name they are. Don't. I've done that. Been down there that road. And just to find out that people put demands and stuff and they're just kind of, kind of like super spooky. And no, man, I ain't doing that. This is, God is, see, because we don't need, God don't need entertainment preachers to build this house. What God needs is a group of people, watch this, that live sanctified, sold out when nobody's looking. See, you want a revival? Live holy. You want a move of God in our church? Live righteously. And what happens is, is then there's creating an atmosphere. It's like a whirlwind, and it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And it pushes back the forces of darkness. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. So we come in here, and we're bringing God an offering. So right now, we're going to give of our our tithes and offerings. And so the ushers are coming forward. Amen. 
Praise his holy name. I'm just going to throw this out there. Offerings went down big time last week, and that should not happen. I'm going to tell you why they went down. I'm not an idiot. I've been down this road before. Everybody gives real big on Easter Sunday, but then they rob God of their tithe the following week. People, that's wrong. It is better not to vow than to vow and not pay on what you vowed. You don't, you don't, God is not a cash advance place. You don't write a cash advance check to God and say, God, here, I'm going I'm to keep my tithe this week and I'm going to triple tithe next week. That, my friend, is robbery. God, don't play that game. And as a matter of fact, God will charge you more than those interest places. As a matter of fact, God says he'll charge you a fifth if you want to read your Bible. 20%. So you don't do that. That's, that's not faith. When you take money that's, uh, that's God's money and you put it towards yourself and then say this, I'm going to do this next week. What you're doing is you're saying, I'm trusting me to make this happen. And you're not being a good steward. A good steward would f take care of his finances and have everything in order and know exactly what's coming down the pike. I, I, I have a problem understanding that mentality. And here's why. Because here's what tithing is. Tithing is, I made 500 gross, so you're taking home about, I guess, 390, something like that, 400, and you're tithing $50. Right when you get your increase, the first thing you do is you sow your tithe. You do not pay your bills first, and then what you have left, you give to God. That, my friend, is wrong. You say, why is it wrong? Because the Bible says it is to be a first fruit offering. God's hands are tied. You say, well, God's hands are never tied. God's hands are tied because of disobedience. God um, uh, releases, because seed time and harvest, if you go up and, and, and put an apple seed in the ground, an apple tree pops up, and you get all these apples, that's all you're ever going to get. But if you take out of that apple the seed, the four seeds that are in it, and you plant those seeds, then you can receive another tree. Are you hearing me today? So that's how seed time harvest operates. And many people don't understand that, and they're trying... They're, they're still trying to operate in the natural mind, and they're realizing, why am I still short? Why am I short every week? Why, why is there never enough? Well, the Bible says you have bags with holes in them. And the reason is, is because you're still living in a system that God wants to get you out of so you can walk in supernatural provision. Supernatural provision comes by faith. And you've, that's why God gives you the opportunity in your finances to every week. Do you know? It's not just your finances of a check you get. Every area of increase. Every area of increase when, I, when people are so gracious to sow in, into my life and they'll give me gift cards, I sow on, it's increase. It's increased to me. I sow on that increase. As a matter of fact, I sow more than my tithe because sometimes, the, really, God is my witness, the, the blessings come so much, sometimes it's difficult to keep track of everything. So I sow much above my tithe and then I give offering. Now, tithe is a designated part of a harvest. That's what a tithe is. It's a designated part. It's the same portion from, for, for, unless you work a job that's possibly in your own business and you don't get the same paycheck every week, which is before I, I was in a pastor, I was an evangelist. So my income was up one minute, down the next, you know. And so, and then, then sometimes people would give me ties of different things like tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. I'd sow a tomato, I'd throw it right back at them. Glory to God, amen. I'm joking, I'm joking. And so, and then an offering is anything above that tithe. And that's what we did on Resurrection Seed Offering. We honored God with that offering, right? And so now we come and we say, okay, increase comes in. And so, and here, here's the thing. When I share that with you, we are not in need. We're not in, in red. We're not in, we actually just put a brand new, we had to put a second, all those air conditioners are, got ripped out. That one got, or are getting ripped out because they don't work anymore. That one got ripped out. We just replaced it with a five ton unit. And I know it feels cool in here to you and, and that's because it's just not 95 degrees outside. When it's 95 degrees and this place is filled with 500 people, you're going to wish to God we had another one. Okay, and so we're, we're, we're really believing God to, to, and I don't know for sure yet if we're going to need that, but it's paid for. 
Everything's paid for. Uh, we paid $100,000 off of the note. We owe $100,000 left on that note. We're going to pay it off by July 1st because that would be one year, right? That's what we've been decreeing. It didn't come, every, you know, everything didn't come in. We're still waiting for a, a, about 20000 of, of I think it's almost 20,000 of other seed to come in for res seed, and then we'll pay, spend, set, send another 25,000 to get that knocked out. But that's, that's not why I come before you. It's my responsibility to stand before you because we're taken care of. You, and here's the mindset of people. If the church is okay, watch this, then I'm, in, I'm hurting. You're hurting because you're walking by the, a system. Hey, Rudy, you're going to enjoy this one. What to, at the Tower of Babel, we got Pentecost Sunday coming up in May. Did you know at Pentecost, not only the law of Moses come, came down, but that's when the Tower of Babel was disrupted. I just found that out by historians. I didn't know that. I mean, if I did know it, I forgot. You said, what's, what's that have to do? Well, the Tower of Babel is where mankind came together and they want, and the Bible says this, they formed what? They formed what? They formed bricks and made it, uh, they formed what? They formed what, Rudy? Brick, what? There's a lot of stuff in the news right now about bricks. There's a lot of stuff going on right now about bricks, the BRICS nations that are formulating a currency outside our currency, and they're trying to go, watch this, and th th basically, it's a system that they'll be able to control. Now, now, people would say it's outside the system, and I don't believe God's, even though it's going to disrupt some things, I don't believe God, I believe God's going to step in real soon and totally destroy your, their plan, because I believe that system is going to be set up for Antichrist, okay? And God's saying, not yet. I really believe that. I believe we're going to see the greatest outpouring. But I do believe there's going to be some things shaken. But I do believe, isn't that crazy? That at the Tower of Babel, what did he do? He confused the languages, and that, which happened on Pente Pentecost. And then Pentecost is when the law of Moses came down. And then at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down. Pentecost was, what happened? They got tongues, and they all began to speak in different tongues, but they were speaking to God. Right? It was a unified language, God's language, but Tower of Babel was dividing the language. So here is a unity, right? I, it, I, it's just, I don't know, but Pentecost is coming up. And all this stuff's going down. I'm just kind of excited. You said, what's that? You better learn how to walk in the supernatural outside of a system. Even though you still need a paycheck, you still get your finances, you use that in the system, we're in it, but not of it. But see, I operate under a, I, I'm operating under a different thing. No matter what happens, I know that we're taken care of. I know because I know I'm outside the system. I, even though I'm in the system, I'm living outside the system where God can bring supernatural blessing. I don't listen all day to CNN and all this other garbage and live in fear. I have utmost faith, watch this, that my God will will supply all my need. Why? Because I'm outside the system. I've been obedient to God in giving. And when you're obedient to God in giving, you're outside. You're saying, God, I don't trust this system. I trust in yours. And when I'm in your system, you got me covered. Now watch this. I don't live in fear. Zero. Come on. Somebody go zero. zero. Don't live in fear. Come on. Go like this. Go zero. zero. Amen. 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 God bless you as you give unto the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm going to share with you just for just a few moments. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to share this as quick as I can with you. But I got a word that God told me to speak to you, so here it is. I'm just going to go right off my notes. You can bring the scripture verses up. These notes are always on the church app. If you want to get the church app, just go to the app store and you can get it. All my notes are there. To everything there is a season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A season is an appointed time. A season is an appointed time. If everything in our lives is a season and appointed time, then God will be watching over every season, every appointment, and work it out for your good. I want you to get a mindset today that God is watching over you. Now, I'm talking to individuals that you've given your heart to Christ, right? So you got a, you got a covenant promise. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Can somebody say amen? amen? 
The righteous are brought out of the matrix of sin and death and brought into the kingdom of the Son in which is light. Now look at Colossians 1.13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He's called us. He has called us out. He delivered us from the power Right? I'm not under the Babylon system anymore. Neither are you. That Bible, Babylon system is sickness, because that's what's in it. Disease, that's what's in it. Poverty, that's what's in it. That's why when you get called out, you're still in it, but not of it. And you're operating by principles that are completely different, that this, wor- that this world does not understand, my friend, and that world is called faith. You say, I don't know how I'm ever going to get free. You're going to get free because God said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. But you might say, I don't feel free. It's not about your feelings. It's about your faith in God. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. The word said in Psalm 37, verse 4, this is so good. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. All right, so I'm going to commit my way to God. I'm going to trust in God, and God's going to bring everything to pass. You say, what's God going to bring to pass? He's going to bring things in your heart that you know are the truth. Man, I really desire to be free. Okay, who gave you that desire? How did you know you were bound? There's some people living, I mean, there are some people don't even realize how bound they are. I mean, do you really think, I mean, there's, there, I mean just a 45-year-old man walking the street, pushing a cart around. Do you, I, I'm just curious. Not every one of them know just how sad state they're living in. They don't realize how sad, why? I don't know the answer why. I just know, I just know there's, when something's in you, you don't stay in that. The chips may be down, but I ain't staying there. I ain't staying there. I'm going to do what I got to do to make it, to make it happen. Because I wasn't called. Mankind was not called to push around a cart. At, come on, some Wasn't called to lose their family. Wasn't called to have their daughters cussing them out because they're losers. That ain't you. You might be in here and that might be your situation, but it doesn't have to be. Why? Because Jesus came to set the captive free. Can somebody say Amen. Psalm 37, 16. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. My God. I don't care. I told you before, if milk goes to $8, I don't know, what do we pay for organic milk, Christy? We get organic milk because I don't want to drink that other stuff. I don't know how much it is. I think it's like $7 or $8 a gallon. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to pay it. You say, well, Pastor, that goody two-shoe for you. No, watch this. You, you, well, I can't afford to eat. You'll always, you can always afford to eat. Now, you might, you might not have the finances you need, but you thank God for what you got in the same God that turned a few fish and bread. Come on, somebody, and fed 5,000, the same God that'll feed you if you'll believe, and you'll get rid of that thing that's this, this thing right here. It's a small rudder, and it turns the whole ship. Start opening your mouth up and declare, thanks be to God for this meal. I thank God that I got more than enough. I know interest rates are going up, but I'm still going to own a home. It don't matter if interest rates go to 20%. I'm going to own me a home. I don't understand it. I don't have to understand it because my mind don't have to wrap around. You see, I've been born to walk by faith and not by sight. Now watch this. The individual that looks at me and says, you done lost your mind. Are you crazy? Listen, no, I'm a faith-filled man. I'm a faith-filled man. That's what faith will do for you. It'll move mountains. You could say to this mountain, be uprooted and cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart, but believe the things that you say shall come to pass and you shall have whatsoever things that you say. See, a lot of people don't understand that. They say, oh, you're the name it, claim it bunch. You're darn right. I'm the name it, claim it bunch. You want to ridicule, you doubt and unbelief, you analytical mind person that thinks out of your anal opening. 
analytical mind, the root word of analytical is anal. And that's exactly what you're thinking out of. But God's not called you to think out of your butt. He called you to think out of your spirit, man. That's connected to Almighty God. And the only way you get to fine tune that mind, the spirit mind, is to hang out with God. And the more you hang out with God, that's right, I talk to God. Go ahead and put me in a straight jacket. I'll have a smile on my face. Unlike you, pumping Prozac and Zoloft in your bean just to keep yourself in line. Come on. When you start seeing the roaring of the seas, come on somebody, and you start having earthquakes in diverse places, and the earth is shaken for the sons of God to be revealed, and there's tsunamis hitting the earth, and the world's done losing their mind, they're going to run to you and I with smiles on our faces, and we're going to be saying, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. I know my redemption draweth nigh. Psalm 37, 22. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. You ever hear somebody that's got an inheritance and they say, you've been cut off? <laughs> People murder for that. They're going to kill. When, when the cursed ones, that's why they try to kill the righteous. They know they've been cut off. And they believe the devil, that the devil, Lucifer, you know, is going to bless them. That's exactly what the devil wanted to do to, to Jesus. You know, if you bow and worship me, you know, that's what a lot of these stars do. They, do, they, they make this covenant with the devil. There's a $20 million covenant, and they got to do some crazy stuff to get in that covenant, you know. Oh, you know, like Lady Gaga. What a dumb name. Some of y'all listen to her stupid music. It's fun. It's demonic. That woman has got demons in her. And when you listen to that music or allow that music in your home, those demons are creating. Oh, I'm going to say it because some of y'all are so, are so earthly minded. I talk like this and you think I done lost my mind. But I, 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 when, next time a devil shows up, I'm going to call you over and tell you to cast it out. See what kind of power you got. I'm going to tell you what, lady, when you play that garbage, it's creating portals in your home for demons to ascend and descend into your home at will. And many times they don't come through you. They come into your children. Then when you're, and you don't even know it right now, because a lot of times you're chilling five, six, singing the lyrics, you know, just easy, innocent. And the next thing you know, you got kids bound by demons, and you don't even know it. They're 15, 16 years old, rebellion, and you say, oh, they need ADHD. They can't, they don't need ADHD. They need, come out! But because you didn't raise them in church, then you wonder why these devils are manifesting. I'm preaching to somebody on television right now. I can feel it. Look what, the, look what the word says. It says, and those blessed by him, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are order of the Lord. Woo he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Isn't that good news? Talk about good news. God's hands on me. Come on, somebody say, God's hands on my life. Oh, glory to God. Even, literally, even though you stumble, you shall not utterly be cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor God's seed begging for bread. Are you hearing me? I remember having to do a couple of things. You know what I'm saying? I went and had to get, when I first got saved, I went to, to a food pantry, got Christina. I, my income dropped 60% when I left the nightclub business. I mean, I literally had, had to go through some times, and it was tough. And our income dropped 60%. And for the, so for four or five years, it was tough. We had uh, Gianna outside of insurance, and that cost us an arm and a leg. And we had to give a house back and give cars back. And we came here to Louisville, and it kind of forced us here. And it was, it was terrible. I had been obedient to God, paying my tithes, asking questions. I don't get it. Having family members look at me saying, what's wrong with you? They knew I was tithing, yet they're, they're making fun of you because you're tithing and here you're broke. Come on, somebody. I, I know what it's like. You feel really embarrassed because you stand up for righteousness. And, you, and when you, you, it's not about what you drive, but you, you know, when you know everybody's ridiculing, making fun of you, and then you jump into a 1977 Chevette that's held together with Christian bumper stickers, people making fun of you. And here, oh yeah, you believe in God. You know what I'm saying? And then you got the drug dealer with his big 22s pimping, ridiculing, and mocking you. Come on. And then you get out of your car because God tells you to go up to him and witness to him. And so I go out and witness to these. I walked up to, I, I had to drive through an area. It was an all black area. Now, I, this isn't racist. This is just truth. Come on, can I talk to somebody today? Yeah, here's a little whitey walking up to five black dudes playing basketball. And I walk up and I got my Bible with my hand. I say, hey guys, God told me to step out and talk to you guys about God. And all four of them start laughing at me except one. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Because I thought somebody was going to start hitting me. Because racism, whether you want to believe it or not, racism is real. 
on both sides. I don't, I don't, I ain't got a lick in me. I, God told me to get out. I'm going up. And that's why I walked up to him. That's why I was selling knife sets in the, in the south side of Chicago. Amen. 26 in Austin. I got mugged. Amen. I did. I got mugged by a skinny white dude on drugs. Amen. On the other one, I got hit in the back of the head. He stuck his hand in my, I had a big old wad of cash in my, in my uh, thing from doing sales. Uh, pit, night, we called it night pitching. And I'd go out there and I'd be witnessing to people and selling knife sets. Glory to God. Hey, I got a $90 knife set for 20 bucks. They said, yeah, really. One guy grabbed the knife from me at, this, at this bar. He took this knife and bent it right in front of me. He went, and then he threw all my knives on the floor. I said, man, you didn't have to do that. And I just had to pick them all up. And I remember that. I'd walk into places. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, amen. God hand was on me. It didn't seem like it was on me back then. But when you walk in faith, my friend, it might not happen now, but it's going to happen. It shall come to pass. You might not be healed now, but you shall be healed. You might not be walking in breakthrough now, but you shall be. You might not have your family or friends or, or some of the people you're believing God for saved, but they shall be saved. You see, because they don't stand a chance when you're righteous in the corner. And you're praying for them. I, this matrix system is just, I'm telling you, it's a world that you and I get to speak into and speak life into. Are you hearing me today? Amen? All right. Go to Psalm 37, verse 40. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Oh, I trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not unto my own understanding. In all my ways, I will acknowledge him and he will direct my path. Trust has legs. If I'm living in fear and anxiety, there's no trust. You say, well, I, I deal with anxiety. You deal with anxiety because you don't trust God. No, it has to do with something else. No, it's God. Everything's God. If you don't trust God, you're in anxiety. Anxiety is fear. Anxiety is not a thyroid condition. Anxiety is a demon. His name is fear. You got to learn how to address that spirit. Wake up in the morning. It is your, watch this. Your weakness is your best friend. It teaches you how to dig a well. I don't allow those things to come into my life. It, it, it may be hell. It might come against me and try to destroy my life. But I've learned to embrace those things and say, oh, I'm dealing with this fear. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray. It's still there tomorrow. I'm going to pray harder. It's still there the next day. I'm going to pray even harder. Devil, you're going to lose. And guess what? Every single time he loses. Every time. Every time. You see, I'm not the same man I used to be. I've gone through a battle. I've fought the lion and the bear. I've had a few Goliaths stand up from time to time time and guess what I just cut off their head with the very thing that they raised up against me and I'm sure I'm going to have a few other Goliaths rise up but greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that is in the world can somebody say amen and the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of your mortal body yeah, I'm dealing with this homo spec it, it with all due respect, I'm not trying to make fun of homosexuals. And this, I just want you to know God can deliver a homosexual. But I want you to see just how ridiculous homosexuality is. He takes a man and makes the man a woman. That's a ridicule to God. That's what I want you to see. What we need to do is when that spirit starts getting on you. And you start, start sensing the same attraction to the same sex. Something ought to rise up in you like a growl. How dare you? And then guess what? I'm going to wake up the next morning and kick the devil's butt. I'm going to wake up the next morning and I'm going to kick the devil's butt. I'm going to wake up and guess what? I'm going to wake up the next 20, 30, 40 years of my life to get up and kick the devil's butt because I know who lives in me and I know that spirit don't line up with that spirit, Holy Spirit. And so I have the responsibility before God to fight the devil. I'm gonna, Paul said it this way, I fight the beast. Because that's what he did in Ephesus. He fought the beast. Demonic principalities and powers of darkness. My friend, that's glory. That's where when you walk into heaven, you gotta go, uh, you're got surrounded by a myriad of angels applauding. Yeah. And you're walking in going, what? I didn't do anything. It was all God. Yeah. Why? Because they've been watching. They've been watching how you fought devils. If, you could, if, if our spirit man eyes could be opened. When you wake up in the morning, there's a devil there trying to tell you, go hit the snooze button, hit the snooze button, hit the snooze button. 
When you go to work, somebody cuts you off. You want to ruin your day. You want to flip them off, and you don't. The devil's going, flip them off. Flip them off. Road rage. Every day, when we, whether we realize it or not, there are demonic powers instigating. Instigating. I had, my God, Heather saw the worst side of me yesterday. I was, Heather works with me. I, I was, I, we were setting up for our, our TV thing on um, social media, which, by the way, I'm probably doing another one this Friday. It, it, it's so funny. They have, they, listen, I go on, analytics, right when I get done with my, my YouTube thing, says we had over 136 people uh, watch the program. I get off, and I, and I happen to go back to the page to edit it. It said there were 12 views. Now, the, every social media platform, they have squelched me. Facebook, literally, uh, I can't boost anymore on Facebook. I can't boost anymore on Instagram. And boosting means pay for an ad. They say I've lost that right because I went against their guidelines back in 2019 and they still got a squelch on me. I'm a nobody. Literally, I'm a, a, a literally. We were ha having an Instagram about a month and a half ago, 1,500 to 2,000 views, every post that I put out ministering to people all over the nation. I mentioned a homeless, I said, well, I, I just, I, I didn't realize what I put on there. It's what was you know, I said something about, you know, a male's got one of these, but I actually said the word, and it squelched me. The next day, 100 views. On every video I put out, 100 views, 150 views, from a 1,500 to 2,000. So that's, that's the censorship that we have in America. And I'm a nobody. So we got to break that algorithm. Sooner or later, I would assume you can break the algorithm by getting, getting more people, because I'm, I'm not a known person like some of these other people. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, we're doing it again on Friday. And we had, we had, uh, we're preaching, God, well, I'm trying to put this stuff together and get it. I've already advertised that we're going to be on. And everything went wrong. We didn't have this cord. And then the next thing you know this, and I'm getting frustrated. And I'm just, rah, 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 rah. I'm griping. And, and, I'm, and I keep going, I'm sorry, I rep to Heather, I repent, Heather. Because I'm doing this in front of her. And, I, and then I felt bad this morning. I woke up and I'm, I'm such a heathen. I'm supposed to be representing Christ as a pastor of this church. And, and I'm such a heathen. Oh, Lord, forgive me. And, you know, and, and so Heather, she don't care. She's just like, but it's still, it, it doesn't matter. She don't care. I'm not supposed to act like an, like an idiot. Like, just trust the Lord. I, I wish I could be just be, hey, praise God. The TV didn't work. That didn't work either. Well, glory to God. It's all the Lord's will. Amen. That just ain't, and I'm like, oh, that ain't me. And I'm like, make it me. I want that to be me. But I got goals I'm shooting for. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody else get frustrated in the house? Yeah. I know. All right, let's keep going. All right, here's the warning. Hebrews chapter, but let's go ahead and finish with Hebrews 3. Unbelief is our enemy. Hebrews 3, verse 16. For who having been, who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of their unbelief. So unbelief keeps you out of the blessing that God wants to get you in. Now, none of us want to say we don't believe. I'm just going to tell you right now, those of you that don't tithe, don't believe. That's why you don't tithe. You don't believe. I'm not trying to pick on you, but I, many people just say, Ooh, it's for somebody else, and it's not. It's you. I love you. Just trying to help people. Here's a warning. Look at this, Hebrews 2, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation with at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Verse 12, beware, brethren, lest there be in you any in evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now, we're talking about God's hand on us. I'm not talking about salvation, but salvation is everything. God wants us to be so trusting him for every aspect of our life, even no matter how hard it gets, no matter what's going on in our life, we are trusting the Lord. Fear has, is not your friend. Fear is not your friend, people. Why, it's this week Friday and all my money is... Uh, no, fear is not your friend. I'm telling you, I'm going to say it again. Fear is not your friend. You got to slap that thing and the way you do it is get into the atmosphere of God. 
I, I have to have the mind of Christ. I've got to get up in the morning. When I don't have my time with God and things try to distract me, because as of right now, I, God's got me prepping for what's coming. I've never prayed so much in my life. And yesterday was one of those days, that, and I said, it ain't happening again because I was getting prepped for this thing and ready, and I ain't going to let it happen again. I said, it ain't worth it. I paid the price because my mind, I, from, watch this, from where, where I need to be at, there is so much warfare in my life where I'm at right now, I can't survive getting busy. I have to stay in that zone. You hearing me? So, so. Now, not everybody, many people, they got to work a full-time job, this, this, but this, this is what I, this is my, my responsibility. So, but everybody has got to give their time to God. God's hands on you. But when that, what that means is you're under God's umbrella. Don't get outside of it. The umbrella is there for you. Woo! It's raining and everybody else getting whipped with me. Woo! A thousand fall at my side and 10,000 in my right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. All the wicked. God's prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. They all looking at you and they're going, why are you getting whooped? Because I've been obeying the Lord. Come on, Adley. Come on, help me out. He's like, no, I ain't doing it. <laughs> He's going to leave me hanging out here. Let's finish this. All right, Hebrews 4, verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest lest anyone fall short on the same example of disobedience. Somebody say, God is with me. Matthew 10, 30. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Not hard for me. God ain't got no problem right there. But you know what? His word says the hairs on your head are all numbered. So God's got you. When you know God's got you, he's got you. Watch this. Uh, Isaiah chapter 49, 16. See, I have inscribed on you on the palms of my hands. I'm going to mess somebody up right now. And you're going to get, some people are going to get offended, but I don't care. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Uh, God's got your name tattooed on his hand. Now, I know, well, God said, don't tattoo your body. God also said, right in the next verse, don't trim the, trim the sides of your beard. So before you're all hoopty duppy on, on a tattoo people, are you hearing me? Now, I do believe there's some, there's some there, I mean, I, I just think it's wise not to tattoo, you know, your, 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 your nose. I just think it's wise not to tattoo certain parts of your body. I just think that's wise. Now, you want to do it. I don't think God's got an issue with it. You say, why did God say not tattoo your body? He said not to tattoo your body because he didn't want you looking like a pagan. Because back in the day, they would cut themselves and do tattoos, and they would look like the heathen. Today, everybody's got them. Now, it doesn't mean God's gospel evolves. Tattooing isn't a heart issue. It's not a heart issue. It's not an internal. So therefore, it's not that big. But it, now, now watch this. It can be bondage to some people if they get it and they make tattooing can become very addictive from what I've heard. And then the next thing you know, you, why are you doing it for what reasons? There's a lot of other things. Reasons why are you hearing me? I don't believe people should tattoo their tongue. Although I really do believe a lot of people should have a nail through their tongue because they can't shut their mouth. But I first off, the tongue piercing has to do with sexuality. It has to do with a, perver a spirit of perversion. So a lot of people that get saved, I believe, ought to unpierce their tongue. That's my personal conviction. If you want to keep them that blue in their mouth and they're talking about the fat Albert, then you go around the head. You go up to talk, talk, and I don't care if, you, if that offends you. I don't mean to offend you, but it, I mean, everybody else is thinking it. And I just, I'm up here under an anointing, and I get bold when I'm under an anointing, and I say things, and then I go home, and I'm like, oh, my God, did I say that? <laughs> Amen. I don't, believe you, I don't believe a woman ought to be tattooing her belly button. Why? It's sexuality. You walk around, you want to show it? You want guys to look right at your belly button? And there's some women, they, they're out to here. They should not be tattooing their belly button or piercing their belly button or wearing half shirts. I walked down the street the one time, my wife and I'm, I'm looking at, I'm, this woman's got to be 300 pounds, and she's got a half shirt on, and her belly, I mean, she has Dunlap, she's got Dunlap disease. It just Dunlapped over, and I mean, everybody to see it. It's one thing to be, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying, you know, she's attractive, and I, I'd rather be looking at that so I'm not having to close my eyes and 
bind lust from getting on me of a woman that's got a really nice hourglass figure. But this woman, she ain't got no business. And I'm like, somebody needs to tell her, you ain't got a right to do that. What is your deal? I mean, and then they got all these oversized women doing the panty commercials. Now they're like 500 pounds and they're doing all these panty commercials. Well, I guess it's good because I have no problem with that. I'm like, all right, next commercial, please. You know, I don't know. Victoria's Secret comes out. I'm like, honey, turn it off. Glory to God. Amen. I guess maybe, maybe the devil's helping us out. Amen. Let's finish up. Band, come on up with. <laughs> I better finish up. I won't get myself into trouble. Isaiah 43, verse 1. God help me, Jesus. Lord, I want to be holy, set apart for you. Lord, I want to be holy, a vessel tried and true. When I come into your throne room, I receive the strength that I need to make my life a living sacrifice for you. Amen? We want our lives to be so set apart for God, right? So holy before the Lord. It's, it ought to be in your heart to do that. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God's got you. God's hand is on your life, and it ought to create such a, a, a knowing. Your, the hairs on your head are all numbered. He's got your name written on the palm of his hand. And that's the relationship that you've been given by God through the redemption that comes through Jesus. Before that, the Bible tells us that you were under God's judgment. Before we got saved, we were under the judgment of God. John 3, 17 and 18, it's, it, it, it'll, it, the condemnation of God is over you. At any given moment, you're going to be judged by God. Guilty as charged. But then what? He sets you free from darkness, brings you into the light through Jesus only. And then he favors you, graces your life with provision to live on this earth. If he wanted you now, he would have taken you home right when you got saved. But he leaves you here and he leaves you gifts. And blessings, but those gifts and blessings are based upon your faith pulling them out of heaven. It's up to you to walk in obedience. I can't, you play around with the world, you're gonna get beat up. I'm just gonna walk in obedience to God. I'm not gonna allow sin to make come into my life. You know, those of you getting an, an, an argument with your with your spouse, Bible said, Don't let your don't let the sun go down on your on your wrath. Why? You give place to to Satan. Amen? Get it right. Let's stand on our feet, please. Just close your eyes for a minute and ask the Spirit of God just to seal that word in you today. God's hand is on your life. Don't drift away. Don't get overwhelmed with what you see. Don't be overwhelmed with your burdens and finances and physical things that the enemy tries putting on you. We're coming into an hour where I'm telling you, prophetically, people dropping at our left and dropping on our right, dead. I believe it. Dead. And God said, it won't come near you. Just keep your eyes open and look at the reward for the righteous. And you're going to be able to win people to Christ. I said, you're going to be able. We got a lady coming this week. I, I hope I can share this. Let me find out if I can. Can I be vague and share this? I'm going to be vague and share this. We got a woman that got, got, the, uh, got the jab. And ever since she got the jab, she has been sick, majorly sick. And she's coming. She doesn't come to this church. She's coming to church this Sunday. Because she heard this is a church that believes in healing. She needs God. And she knows it's because of that. We need to believe God. We're gonna, listen, we're going to see more of this in age to come. And people are going to be starving to get for God to come through and, and give them a miracle. And we believe in a miracle working God, church. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we love you. I pray your blessing over your people tonight. I pray a blessing over 
over your people. Rolando, you, did you start that job yet? We prophesied. I, I just saw that. I was looking at our videos not too long ago. I prophesied like a month over you. And I said this Friday, so I was off by about three weeks. Glory to God. He got a great job, pays him. Have you ever made that kind of money before? Never made that kind of money before. He got himself a job. Come on, somebody say amen. Isn't that awesome? Now watch this. Watch this. I'm looking at the camera now because I don't see you here. And I'm wondering why I don't see you here. Because I prophesied to you that you get a job and you get blessed. And now you're not even in God's house. That ain't right. People... I give these words and you mark it down. If people don't do what the, I'm telling you, they won't last six months. God did not bless you so you could get out of God's house. Woo! Amen. Well, let's just say thank you, Jesus. I could be here all night. I'm under it right now. God bless y'all. We'll be back. Let's sing. Come on, let's sing. Come on, let's sing.